Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com, and I've been working on a really big project lately, the lions for the Lion King play. They're headdress masks, so they'll go on top of the head instead of in front of the head like this one back here. And now I need to put some paper mache on it, and I'm going to do something really different. I need paper mache that's going to be really, really strong, but I only want one layer of paper mache on here because it needs to be really light. Um, th these are going to be used by like grade school, middle school kids, maybe high school. They need to be as light as possible so that the, they can be dancing around without fatigue, having something heavy on their head. and. It has to be flexible so it'd be easy to get the cap part of the mask on and off. So what I've decided to use is wood glue and specifically Tight Bond 3. Now I also have some of this Elmer's wood glue in the house. I am not going to use it. I tried it. I don't like it. I know that some people are going to want to use the less expensive glue. I'm going to try to talk you out of it, <laughs> but you know, maybe I can't. I don't know. We'll see. Now one reason I'm telling you about this is because I think that this will be a really good way to make any kind of mask. If you want it to be lightweight and you want it to dry really fast, like you've got to get it done by tomorrow. Because wood glue is specially designed to dry really quickly, it definitely dries a whole lot quicker than um, the flour and water paste. But it's expensive, so you wouldn't want to use it for just like everything. But for something like this where you really want it to be strong and you want it to be lightweight, I think this is going to be a good way to go. You do want to mix it up though, like I'm going to. I put some glue in here. I'm going to put some water in here with it, just a little bit. I don't want very much because I don't want my mask to get, you know, really soggy. just want enough to make it brushable. But you'll see that I, I put it in a container, just cut down a yogurt container because a couple of weeks ago I, I tried this and I kind of used a, a bowl that I really intended to use again for something else. But I wandered off, I let this stuff dry in the bowl and I can't get it out. I mean, it is that strong. So that, that bowl kind of <laughs> went in the garbage. Don't do that. Um, put it in just something that you can throw away really important. Okay, so let's go ahead and add a little bit of water to this and I'm going to get started on my mask. There, that'll work. I just put enough in there to make it a little bit runnier than it is when it comes straight out of the bottle. The wood glue does feel a little weird when it dries on your fingers. You might want to use um, gloves to do this. You can see that the glue around the eye is already starting to dry. It took me about, oh, probably an hour and a half to do this. Maybe a little bit more. I had to take the dogs for a walk. So I'm not exactly sure how much time it took. But it's not something you can rush. I need to just sit it upside down and put him on, on his ears to dry overnight. I finished putting the paper mache on there yesterday about 6.30 in the afternoon and it's now about 7 o'clock the next morning. I just got out of the shower and it's completely dry. I think it probably would have been done in about 8 hours but I didn't feel like getting up to check <laughs> so, so it's all done. Now I did run into one problem when I was adding the paper mache to the mask and that actually is caused by the fact that this uh, tight bond glue is so strong. When it starts to dry on your hands, it'll start to get to the point where it's a little bit tacky. And that's when it's really the stickiest. So if you have some glue drying on your fingers and you pick up the mask in order to turn it around and then you pull your finger off, 
it will actually pull some of the damp paper off with it and then you have to go back over it and smooth it off. It was a minor problem and it only happened in a couple of places but you'll definitely notice when it happens so you might want to keep a damp paper towel handy. The other thing that you're going to use that paper towel for actually is uh, for area like this. This is the one spot right on the inside of this one ear that isn't quite dry. It will be dry in a couple of hours but it should have been dry by now. Now, the reason it isn't is because when I put too much glue in that area, it pooled right into the bottom of that ear. So if you see that before laying it down to dry overnight, just go ahead and take your paper towel and uh, wipe off the extra glue and then you won't have that problem. It'll all dry at exactly the same time. It's really strong. It's still flexible as you can see. It still fits. I think it'd be so much fun after it gets painted and, and the mane goes on. I think it'd be just a hoot to wear this down to the local store. <laughs> Probably won't. I'm not quite that adventurous, but it just would be so much fun. And I'm really happy with the way this wood glue worked. It's really tight. It reinforced every one of those seams. This is about as indestructible, I think, as you can get. Now the edges look darker, as you can see. You might think, oh, that's, that's going to need to be sanded. But actually it doesn't. It came out really nice and flat. Now to make sure that it stayed flat, I did use all the tips that I put together in a previous video. I'm going to give you a link to that real soon. If you've ever used wood glue for paper mache or if you have any ideas for other projects where it would be really helpful, please put a comment down below. Click on this link here if you would like to see the video that shows you how to make paper mache lay down really smooth so you don't have to do a lot of finishing. Then go make something and come back and visit me at ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.